Hi, uh, today we will discuss equilibrium, determinacy, and stability. For an overview of our topic today, uh, I will review the load path and discuss a little bit about the principle of superposition. And we will also review the equations of equilibrium, determinacy, and stability. For the load path, uh, as, you know, uh, as we discussed last time, uh, the loads should be transferred from the slab towards the floor beam or joist to the girder, which is a larger uh, beam, and transferred to the column to the foundation or the footing and then the foundation. That's the usual uh, load path for a vertical structure or a building. But for particular the suspension bridge, as you have seen, uh, first the loading is uh, coming from the deck. So the loading should be transferred to the stringers and then to the floor beams and towards the hanger or the suspenders, which is in tension and to the main cable which is also in tension and the forces in main cable will be transferred to the towers or to the column and then to the putting and or the pier and the foundation also the other uh, forces on the left or right hand portion uh, will be transferred towards the anchor we call the dead man The principle of superposition forms the basis for much of the theory of structural analysis. Uh, as uh, stated, the principle of superposition is that the total displacement or internal loadings or stress at a point in a structure subjected to several external loadings can be determined by adding together the displacements or internal loadings or stress caused by each of the external loads acting separately. What does it mean? Uh, if you have a structure loaded with several uh, loadings, of course, it's not easy to, to analyze that one. So according to the principle of superposition, you can separate its load for a particular uh, structure. Okay. After separation of the load, uh, you can just analyze the structure according to that load. The resulting uh, stresses, the resulting uh, structural effect can then be added for its of the loading. That's what the principle of superposition means. But for this uh, principle to be valid, it is necessary that a linear relationship exists among the loads, stresses, and displacements. That's the, the, the necessary uh, relationship that we need for the principle of superposition. Thus, the two requirements must be imposed for this principle. The first requirement is that the material must behave in a linear, elastic manner so that Hooke's law is valid and therefore the load will be proportional to the displacement. If you remember, the we have the graph stress versus the strain. As you increase the loading, uh, uh, we will apply first the loading to the structure or the material. As we increase it slowly, the, the stress and strain diagram will be a straight line until it will reach the yield point. So, in this manner, it should be within the elastic range, not after the yield strength, because after the yield strength, the, the material property is inelastic already. So, it's just along the straight line. That is covered by Hooke's law. Second one is that the geometry of the structure must not undergo significant change uh, if you apply the loading. Take note, small displacement theory applies to this our topic. Large displacements will significantly change the position and orientation of the loads. Thus, uh, 
As an example, the cantilever thin rod subjected to a force at, at its end, causing it to bend. A very large uh, bending. Also, uh, I want you to review the equations of equilibrium that uh, because you have to recall from your statics uh, you already have discussed this one in your statics but i just want to to review this one uh, that every member or every structural system should be in equilibrium when when it maintains balance of force and moment in general this requires that the force and moment equations of equilibrium be satisfied among the three independent axes, uh, namely the X, Y, and the Z axis. So this should be 90 degrees from each other. These equations of equilibrium in terms of the three axes are the summation of forces along the X is equal to zero, the summation of forces along Y is equal to zero, and the summation of forces along Z is equal to zero. Also, if you sum up all the moments at the x-axis, it should also be equal to zero. The summation moment along the y-axis should be equal to zero. And the summation moment on the z-axis is equal to zero. The principal load-carrying portion of most structures, however, lie in a single plane. And the loads are also coplanar. So the above equations is usually reduced to three equations if we are studying 2D structures. That is, uh, we can say, in the XY plane. So it will now become summation of forces along the X-axis is equal to zero. The summation of forces along Y is equal to zero. And if you have to take the moment around the Z-axis, it should also be equal to zero. Normally, this Z-axis is, we name it the point zero. Okay, so you can say summation of moment at point zero or point O is equal to zero. Take note that all of the signs signifies algebraic sums of the forces and moments. So normally, especially for the forces, you need to reduce it to its components along the x, y, and the z axis. As a guideline or procedure, in the equations of equilibrium, or if you are applying these equations, remember it is first necessary to draw a pre-body diagram of the structure or its member. This is really needed for every uh, problem, a pre-body diagram showing all the, the details, especially the dimensions, the directions and magnitudes of the external and the internal forces involved. If a member is selected, it must be isolated from its supports and surroundings and its outline shape should be drawn. So you have to isolate it from the supports and its surroundings. If you say surroundings to its neighboring uh, members. All the forces and couple moments must be shown that act on the member. In this regard, the types of reactions at the supports can be determined using table 2.1, which we have discussed uh, uh, earlier. Also recall that the forces common to two members act with equal magnitudes but opposite directions. So take note, they should be in equal magnitudes but in opposite directions so that you will not be uh, doing the, the wrong way. Also, we have, uh, if we have to cut a certain uh, member, uh, the, the cutting should have the internal loadings. This internal loading at that specified point should be determined. Uh, you can do it using the method of sections. What's the method of sections? You will just cut a portion of the member. By cutting that uh, section, uh, it should be perpendicular to the axis of the member so that uh, you will be able to determine the the shear force, the axial force, and the bending moment. So you have to draw a pre-body diagram just like on the right-hand side 
of either of the cut member and you should isolate and the internal loads should be determined using the equations of equilibrium in general the internal loadings acting at the section will consist of the normal force n the shear force v and a bending moment m so much for that uh, review and i know you are uh, familiar with that but sometimes it's important to review uh, topics that we have uh, studied in the past so that it will be easier to remember and use in the uh, present for the determinacy determinacy of the structure uh, the equilibrium equations provide both the necessary take note necessary and sufficient conditions for equilibrium so if we are talking about equilibrium of the structure or structural members if i say structure this, that's the system the whole uh, structure uh, if you say member it's just a member of the structural system it can be beam column something like that okay so for for us to be able to to say it's in equilibrium so we can just use the equations of equilibrium so when all the forces in a structure can be determined strictly from these equations the structure is referred to as take note statically determinate structure again uh, if your structure can be solved only using equations of equilibrium then the structure is referred to as statically determinate structure so for structures having more unknown forces than the available equations of equilibrium then the structure is what we call statically indeterminate structure so actually the determinacy of the structures can be classified only into two determinate and indeterminate and if it is indeterminate you need to know the degree of indeterminacy that's the the difference between the number of unknown forces with respect to the number of equilibrium equations as a general rule a stable structure of course uh, what we should uh, design should be stable structure do not design an unstable structure a stable structure can be identified as being either statically determinate or statically indeterminate by drawing free body diagrams of all its members and selective parts of its members and then comparing the total number of the unknown reactive force and moment components with the total number of available equilibrium equations so take note uh, normally for a single member there are three equilibrium equations that we can uh, use so normally you have to compare that with the number of reactive force and moments and the other forces so since there are three equations of equilibrium for every member so the basic equation is that three times the number of member three times n so in that way uh, if we have uh, n members three times three uh, three times n to be uh, compared to the number of force and moment reactions for every component so here uh, we have a very basic equation the number of force and moment action components should be equal to the number of parts times three and if you satisfy that equation we call it statically determinate structure otherwise if r is greater than 3n then it is statically indeterminate again to determine the degree of indeterminacy you just have to subtract the r minus the available number of equations yeah to so to use this one we will be uh, showing some examples so that you will be uh, able to understand it but before that uh, so that if a structure is statically indeterminate uh, what shall we do additional equations needed to solve for the unknown reactions are obtained by relating the applied loads take note 
we have to relate the applied loads and reactions to the displacement or slope at different points on the structure. This is what we are uh, we will be doing later on because we will be discussing first determinate structures, then later on after this the midterm we will discuss the indeterminate structures. These equations or additional equations are referred to the compatibility equation. So uh, here we have the equations of equilibrium plus the additional compatibility equations so that we can solve the indeterminate structures. Uh, it must be equal in number to the degree of indeterminacy of the structure. So it's important that you will be able to determine the degree of indeterminacy so that you will know how many compatibility equations that you need. These compatibility equations should involve the geometric and physical properties of the structures. So, for example, uh, so that you will be able to grasp the, the equation, you can classify the beams below as statically determinate or statically indeterminate. If it is statically indeterminate, you have to report the number of degrees of indeterminacy. The beams are subjected to external loadings that are assumed to be known and can act anywhere on the beams. So as of now, it's not really necessary that we have to put the loadings. But anyway, just think that there will be external loadings applied. The two beams, beam C and beam D, are compound beams, which are composed of pin connected members and must be disassembled uh, in your analysis. Note that in these cases, the unknown reactive forces acting between its member must be shown in equal but opposite pairs. Okay, so we will try first the uh, beam A. Uh, if we have to apply the equation R is equal to 3N, or R should be greater than or equal to 3N, then we can classify the structure. Again, R will be the, the reactive forces or moments, and N is the number of members. So here we have a simple beam with an overhang. So uh, first step is that we have to determine the number of reactions. Since we have a pin support, uh, there will be two reactions. Uh, and then uh, on the other side, we have a roller support, there will be one reaction. So how many reactions that we have? We have one, two, three reactions. Or you can draw this way. So therefore, R will be three. And how about N? N is equal to one because we only have one member involved so we have this equation so using the equation r is equal to 3n the equation is satisfied by this particular beam thus the beam is statically determined another uh, beam uh, can you guess if it is determinate or indeterminate you can post the video so that you can have uh, some uh, mental exercise okay I hope you have done it uh, we will try first the first support is a fixed support so there will be three reactive forces uh, horizontal vertical and a bending moment so three and also there are two uh, roller supports so there are one reaction for every roller support so we have three initially plus two so there will be five uh, reactive forces and there is one member so here uh, it's important that you have to draw the different forces or the reactions and then R is equal to 5 and N is equal to 1 applying that to that equation uh, then uh, R is greater than 3N therefore the structure is statically indeterminate to what degree just uh, subtract 5 minus 3, that's a second degree indeterminacy. Okay, so it's quite simple. Another one, uh, a compound uh, structure. Here, since this is a compound structure, meaning it is composed of several members, you have to separate its member. Uh, take note that when you put the reaction on one of the member, the reaction on the other should be uh, of the same magnitude but in the opposite direction. Okay, so you can post by now, and 
you can try uh, mentally if you can find the number of R and the number of N. I hope uh, you were able to find R and N. Uh, in this case, uh, we have to draw first the pre body diagram. Here, the, f the left hand member or element has these uh, forces. Since this is uh, this type of support carries the perpendicular reaction and the bending. On the right hand side, there will be two forces the horizontal and the vertical. On the other member, you have to, to draw the same magnitude of force but in the opposite direction. And then the, the support or the other support is enhanced support, so there will be two reactions. How do we count? For these interconnected members, there should be only two counting. So we have one, two, the horizontal and the vertical, two, uh, three, four, five, six. So there will be, or R is equal to 6, and N will be equal to 2. So that's it. If we have to apply to the equation, uh, R is equal to 3N. So therefore, this structure is statically determinate. <laughs> Lastly, uh, we have this uh, structure with three uh, interconnected members. Uh, so N will be equal to 3. And how about the reactions? For every internal joints, there will be two uh, reactive forces. So we have two joints, two times two, that's four, plus three for its fixed support. So there will be 10 uh, R. Uh, here is the pre body diagram. R is equal to 10, N is equal to three. So what will happen? R is greater than three times N. So this is statically indeterminate structure to the first degree okay so I hope uh, you will be able to to apply this equation to determine if it is statically determinate or indeterminate oh here's another example a pin connected structure you can classify it's of the pin connected structure uh, accordingly if it is statically determinate or statically indeterminate uh, also, if it's statically indeterminate, you have to report the number of degrees of indeterminacy. The structures are subjected to arbitrary external loadings that are assumed to be known and can act anywhere of the structure. Note that classification of pin-connected structures is similar to that of beams. So since you have the idea already uh, for beams, I think you can just uh, apply it here. Uh, it's very easy to determine or find the number of members because they are connected to each other and then uh, look for the reactions. For the first structure, uh, if we have to draw it, uh, and by the way, you can again do mental exercise. Uh, okay, you are done. So here we draw the pre body diagram of the two members. And then put the necessary reactions. So you can now count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So R is equal to 7 and N is equal to 2. So you can apply that to that equation. R is greater than 3N. So this is statically indeterminate to the first degree. The next structure. Again, uh, you can do mental exercise. You can post the video now. I hope you were able to do mental exercise. We will do it now. So we will separate the three members. So N is equal to three. And the forces will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So R is equal to nine. N is equal to three. So as you can see, R is equal to three N. So the structure is statically determinate for the third structure uh, you can simply separate this uh, structure this way uh, we have two uh, members where the corresponding uh, reactive forces are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so R is equal to 10 N is equal to 2 so applying it to the equation uh, R 
is equal to 3 times n or r is greater than 3 times n. Here, uh, this is greater than, so this is statically indeterminate. Take the difference between 10 and 6, that's 4, so statically indeterminate to the 4th degree. And for the 4th uh, structure, again, uh, you can just uh, separate its member. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, uh, 3 members. Uh, you can just assume the, the other connection uh, to be a support reaction. So we have 1, 2, 3 uh, members with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, reactions. So R is equal to 9 and N is equal to 3. So applying to the equation, 9 is equal to 9. So this is statically determined structure. For the third example, uh, this is a frame. Uh, we have discussed the beams, pin connected structures, and then uh, frames. Uh, by the way, if you will see, uh, trusses will be discussed in the other lecture. So here, you can classify each of the frames as statically determinate, statically indeterminate. If it is statically indeterminate, you have to determine the number of degrees of indeterminacy. The frames are subjected to external loadings that are assumed to be known and can act anywhere on the frames. Note that the frame structures are consist of members that are connected together by rigid joints. So this is not the same as the pin uh, connected member. Uh, this is rigidly connected. So sometimes the members form internal loops as shown in figure A. So here A, B, C, D forms a closed loop. So in order to classify this structure, it is necessary to use the method of sections. In the method of sections, you have to cut the loop. Look for the loop, and you have to cut it. Uh, and then after cutting, you can draw the uh, internal loadings. The pre-body diagrams of the section parts are drawn, and the frame can then be classified. Okay, for the first structure, uh, uh, please uh, post first the video so that you can uh, do mental exercise. Okay, are you done? Uh, so for this structure, since there, this is a frame uh, which is rigidly connected to one another, and if there will be a loop, you have to use the method of sections to cut that loop. Okay, so by cutting that loop, this will be the result. The number of reactions will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, so R will be equal to 9, and we have 2 members, where N is equal to 2. So applying the equation, 9 is greater than 6. So this structure is statically indeterminate to the third degree. How about this structure? Again, do uh, mental exercise. Are you done? So... Uh, take note, this is a frame, so they are rigidly connected, and there is a loop. So make sure that you have to cut the loop. You can cut this way, so you can now count the uh, forces. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Mm -hmm. Then uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 9 plus 9, that's 18. So R is equal to 18, and N is equal to 3. So applying the equation, 18 is greater than 9. So this is statically indeterminate to the 9 degree. So as you can imagine now, uh, most of the frames are statically indeterminate. For the third example, take note the frame has no closed loop. So it's not necessary that you have to cut the, the sections. But anyway, for this particular problem, uh, you can try first. Uh, do some mental exercise if it is statically indeterminate and in what degree. 
okay so you are done so here I will show you uh, two ways of uh, solving this type of frame you can cut everyone or you can just uh, separate the supports so here we have the first one we cut uh, every member so the resulting number of reactions here will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. On the other method, the second method, we just uh, remove the structure or separate the structure from the support. So we have the support reactions, which is equal to 9 support reactions. Uh, the first method, we have 18 forces. The second one, we have 9 forces. But uh, the first structure we have one two three four the first method we have four uh, members n is equal to four the other one n is equal to one so if we have to apply the values of r and n and use the equation you will see that the structure is statically indeterminate but how about the degree of indeterminacy 18 minus 12 that's 6 9 minus 3 is equal to 6 so they are the same so this is statically indeterminate to the sixth degree. As you can see, if it is not or if the frame has no closed slope, you can do uh, method of sections or you can just separate the structure with the support. Okay, so that's how you determine the indeterminacy of a frame. Aside from that, we need to discuss stability. Uh, uh, every structure should be stable. Do not uh, design a structure that is not stable. Of course, there are structures uh, uh, design or gituyo gitsek design to be unstable. But for civil engineering structure, should, it should be stable. So to ensure that it is stable, you have to ensure that the equation of or the equilibrium of the structure or its members uh, should satisfy the equations of equilibrium. But uh, it's not just necessary to satisfy the equations of equilibrium. The members must also be properly held or constrained by their supports. Uh, regardless of how the structure is loaded, uh, these uh, members should be held or constrained by the supports. There will be two situations that may occur where the conditions for proper constraint must have not been met. That is partial constraints and the improper constraints constraints. For the partial constraints, instability can occur if a structure or one of its members has take note, has fewer reactive forces than the equations of equilibrium. Uh, so uh, since it has a fewer reactive forces than the equations of equilibrium, instability is ensured. <laughs> the structure then becomes only partially constrained. We have this example below. Uh, if you consider the member with the corresponding free body diagram, okay, so there are uh, the forces and the moments. If you use the summation of forces along the x axis, which is equal to zero, uh, it will not be satisfied for the loading condition. Why? Because in the, the reaction doesn't have the horizontal component of the reaction. So this member will be unstable. Also, we have the improper constraints. In some cases, there may be many unknown forces. Yeah, so you will be, uh, there are many more unknown forces as there are equations of equilibrium. However, instability or movement of a structure or its members can develop because of improper constraining by the supports. This can occur if all the support reactions are concurrent or convergent at the point. All the reaction forces will uh, converge at one point. An example of this instability is shown below. From the pre-body diagram of the beam, it is seen that the summation of the moments about point O, the top portion, will not be equal to zero. That is the external force P times D is not equal to zero. So 
uh, the rotation about O will take place. Uh, take note, all the reactive forces at A, B, and C will converge at point O. So the remaining uh, force is P. If you sum up moment at point O, the moment or the summation of moment is not equal to zero. This is what we call concurrent reactions or convergent reactions. Another way is in which improper constraining leads to instability, of course, when the reactive forces are all parallel. Uh, as you can see in the figure below, when the inclined force P is applied, the summation of forces in the horizontal direction will not equal to zero. So this is a parallel reaction uh, instability. Here we have the instability equation. And in general, a structure will be geometrically unstable. That is, it will move slightly or collapse if there are fewer reactive forces than the equations of equilibrium. Uh, that's the first one. Uh, again, fewer reactive forces than equations of equilibrium. Another one is if there are enough reactions, instability will occur if the lines of action of the reactive forces intersect at a common point or are parallel to one another. If the structure consists of several members or components, local instability of one or several of these members can generally be determined by inspection. If the members form a collapsible mechanism, the structure will be unstable. So by now, we can now formalize our statement for the coplanar structure having n members or components with r unknown reactions. Since three equilibrium equations are available for its member, uh, it should be three times the number of members that is n. And it should be compared with the unknown reactions r. If R or the number of unknown reactions is less than 3 times the members, that is the number of equilibrium equations, then the structure is unstable. Again, if the number of unknown reactions R is greater than or equal to the equilibrium or the number of equilibrium equations, that's 3 times N, then it is also an is stable if member reactions are concurrent or parallel or some of the components form a collapsible mechanism. So it's not always necessary that R is equal to 3N is stable. Word of caution, if the structure is unstable, it does not matter if it is statically determinate or indeterminate. In all cases, such types of structures must be avoided in practice. I don't know if you are, you have played Jenga or blocks. You can, you can uh, play blocks by putting blocks on each other, and you can try uh, removing some of the blocks, and you will see how instability occurs in, in a structure. Okay, there will be this example so that uh, you will easily recognize if it is unstable or a stable member or structure. You can classify these structures as stable or unstable. These structures are subjected to arbitrary, arbitrary external loads that are assumed to be known. So for the first structure, uh, you can classify this as, what do you think? Uh, I have shown you the reactions, so there will be three reactions, and we have three uh, available equations of equilibrium. So we have R is equal to 3, N is equal to 1. So 3 is equal to 3. The member is stable since the reactions are concurrent or non-concurrent and non-parallel. So it is statically determinate. How about the other uh, member or structure? This one, the broken line signifies that the reactions are parallel. Uh, as you can see in the pre-body diagram, they are parallel. And remember, if the reactions are parallel, then this is unstable. The member is statically indeterminate, but unstable since the three reactions are concurrent at B. The third one, we have the structures are classified as indicated, and you can see this is a roller support or a rocker in particular. So there are three reactive forces which are parallel. Uh, 
if it is parallel again this is unstable so of course the beam is statically indeterminate but unstable since the three reactions are all parallel and the other uh, structure is this one uh, you can separate its member uh, actually by just inspection you can see member AB will move because there is only one reactive force at A and B we have two forces so as you can see we have three members and one two three four five six seven reactive forces seven uh, is equal to three times n uh, so you can see that uh, 7 is less than 9. So the number of reactive forces is less than the number of equilibrium equations. So this can be seen by inspection since AB can move horizontally without restraint. Okay, so this is unstable. So that's all for the, the equilibrium uh, determinacy and instability. And I hope you are now ready to 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 go on analyze some structures trusses beams pin connected members and frames okay thank you for listening